Why was this small, basic-looking phone the best Sony Ericsson ever made? And how did it become one of the top-selling phones of all time? This is also one of my personal favourite phones, the K750, with its tiny 1.8-inch screen. Looks like it was designed to make calls, maybe also text messaging. But don't be fooled by its decidedly non-smartphone design. Under the sliding cover at the rear lies a camera that challenged not just phones in 2005, but also standalone point-and-shoot cameras. Most phones at the time were still using low-resolution potato cameras, but the K750 featured a 2-megapixel camera in a phone so small that really made you wonder why you were also carrying a point-and-shoot camera. With this phone, you could suddenly take worthwhile photos like these. And 17 years later, you can still take an exemplary photo today. To store all these photos, the K750 has a memory card slot, a feature that was not widely included in popular phones at the time. Though it does use Sony's proprietary memory stick format, which was not that popular. The K750 came with a 64 megabyte card, with higher capacity cards, such as the 512 megabyte, being fairly expensive. But if you were savvy enough, you found that you could buy a micro SD card to memory stick adapter. And with two gigabyte micro SD cards being released the following year, decent capacity was becoming a less expensive option. This is a dual micro SD card to memory stick adapter. And if you were able to get one of these, this combines both micro SD cards into a single volume RAID array. You could get a whopping four gigabyte of storage years before the first 4GB iPhone arrived on the scene. And all this storage was useful for the other great feature of this phone, MP3 music playback. Sony Ericsson also released the W800 Walkman phone, which was identical to the K750, except for the different housing, and they included a 512 megabyte memory stick. The firmware in this model is slightly different to the K750. It has an airplane mode and improved Walkman controls. But with the hardware being identical, if you had the skills, you could cross flash the W800 firmware onto a K750 and get all the features of the Walkman specific model. Now you could replace not only your camera, but also your iPod. All with a phone in a very tidy small package. And the K750 and W800 come without a headphone jack. You needed a dongle plugged into the bottom of the phone to plug your headphones into, showing us just how far ahead of its time this amazing little phone really was. It should be noted that the full model number was K750i, but with the I suffix having become so universal on phone model numbers that it became redundant by this point. Even Sony Ericsson sometimes began leaving off the I. The K750 at first glance doesn't look like it can do much with its small screen. But look closer and there's a host of features. Of course there are themes for personalising the look of your phone. With many user generated themes being made and shared along the way. There's even an organizer function with the ability to schedule your calendar, have tasks and notes, a calculator, alarms, timers, and probably the most useful function buried down towards the bottom of this menu is the light. There's also a built-in web browser included, but it's WAP, so I don't know how useful that really was. It's interesting to note that the browser also supports streaming of audio and video, but with 2G speeds topping out about 128 kilobits per second and dropping as low as 40 kilobytes per second under standard network loads, when Sony Ericsson claimed that streaming was available in real time with minimal downloading or waiting, this seems like a bit of an understatement. Let's instead have a look at the built-in media player. Different things like that you're not going to learn from a father like Lee. I owe you one. You could watch TV 
on this very unassuming looking phone. And you can bet I did that with my K750. Having a quick 22 minute comedy episode on hand was well worth it for those moments that needed it. This video is being decoded on the ARM CPU running at 110 megahertz. But this CPU could do so much more. Java Micro Edition or J2ME apps were becoming a big part of phones at the time. This is where the K750 really shows its ability. With the inbuilt games, Super Real Tennis with full 3D graphics. And of course, Aero Mission 3D. What an amazing game this is. For built-in games, these are really well done. But of course, you can also add third-party apps and games. The hard part today is there are thousands and thousands of these apps and games, and they cover a range of years from early Java phones to the more advanced phones in later years. The K750 is somewhere in the middle of all this, with early Java games having been made for lower resolution screen phones, and they often don't fill the whole screen on the K750, such as this game Cross Black, that only uses a small portion of the screen. Though I really like this game, it's fast and responsive and quite fun to play. The K750 includes an eight-way joystick, which is used to navigate throughout the user interface. It also works quite well for some games, but many games were often designed to work better with standard keypad controls. There are also games made for later phones that need a higher resolution screen, such as this version of Quake. You can only see a portion of the display, making this unplayable on the K750. Even if a game fits or rescales to the K750 screen, the graphics may still be too much for this phone. Asphalt 3 3D is a good example, with some really terrible frame rate. It also has terrible responsiveness and it's just really hard to control. Finding good games for this phone out of the thousands of possibilities is quite a challenge. But there are many great games. Namco's Ridge Racer does quite well, especially for a first person racing sim. It's just fast enough and it looks good. The controls seem fairly sensitive and they do take a bit of getting used to though. Racing games do seem to do well on here. With another example, Racing Pro Contest. I like the sideways display action, but again, I'm struggling to use the controls well. Another style of game that works well are pinballers, such as Borders Ball. The flippers are slightly delayed in their responsiveness though. This might work better on another phone. But I found Space Taxi Pinball to be very responsive. It's got really nice graphics, and this is great to play. There are also some retro style games available, such as this version of Breakout or Arkanoid. I also really like the look of Tempest on here. My favourite game at the moment is probably Bobby Carrot 5 Forever. I've only played a bit so far, but I like the puzzles. They're fun to play. The controls are really good, and it plays really well with the joystick. This game is nicely playable on the K750. There are just so many games available, and I've hardly scratched the surface with what can be played on here. And there are applications available as well, with things like a scientific calculator. There's also an ebook reader, and even a fractal generator that takes its time with generating fractals. The K750 was an amazing phone, one of the best ever made. I really enjoyed this phone when it was in its prime, but it could do something even better than everything you've seen here today. 
It could be software modded with firmware patches, and it could run ELFs, or executable linkable format files. That essentially means it could be hacked to run any unsigned code, just like jailbreaking or rooting does today. It was extremely fun to do this at the time, and a big part of this was the Sense Forum, a place where Sony Ericsson modders and hackers gathered to share information and make Sony Ericsson modding freely available for everyone. It was an awesome community, one of my favourites. There was a huge number of amazing firmware patches, and always more being added, from basic things like activating the light from the press of a button to complete control of the firmware, adding new functions like multitasking, and custom firmware that ran completely outside of the Java sandbox, as if it was extended firmware. And all you needed was the USB cable that was included with your phone to get started. Simply run Far Manager with the Sony Ericsson Flash plugin, hold the C button, and plug in the cable. But I'm finding this is not working on my K750, and I'm unable to connect to USB. And the Sony Ericsson pinout for this bottom connector shows the K750 is not even having USB. What is going on here? Some sort of Mandela effect? Okay, well, there's also a TTL serial connection. The real hardcores would build a serial cable. This could be used to recover a Sony Ericsson that had been bricked so hard that the USB bootloader was corrupted. Fortunately, this is rare. The USB cable was usually enough if you knew what you were doing. But building a TTL serial cable has another advantage today. With the original USB driver still relying on 32-bit drivers, if you want to hack your Sony Ericsson using a modern operating system, then a serial cable enables that. And of course, I had to build one, using one of these cheap USB to serial converters. I also had to modify a phone connector and get it all wired up. And it works. It connects to my K750. It shows me this phone has been hacked in the past, by someone before I got it. It's running an internal Sony Ericsson research and development firmware also known as Brown. This leaked firmware was often used by early modders to do unofficial network unlocking. But I have another problem. I'm getting a lot of loader errors, and I'm unable to flash or patch any firmware. Normally I would turn to the Sense forum at this point, but it disappeared years ago. Most of the information has been lost today, or scattered around the internet. I've been beaten by a simple Sony Ericsson K750. But if I have to be defeated by a phone, I'm glad it's this one. This is one of the best phones ever made. I also still have here my original K750 from back then. It still has many of the firmware patches I applied. Though most seem to be no longer configured or working properly. It's been about 15 years since I last used this phone. My K750 is very worn out. The joystick has become unreliable and it's just not good to use. But it's a great reminder of what's possible. This is not the end. Sony Ericsson modding will rise again. Until then, I do have some nice scene demos running in Java on my K750. Which brings us to the end of this topic for the time being. I'd like to say hello to all the original K750 owners out there. And if you made it this far into the video, I have some awesome videos coming this year, and I can't wait to show them to you. I really appreciate your support, and your comments, and for just enjoying these videos. But that's it for the moment, and I'll see you next time.